Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to calculate the length of the cable. We're going to calculate it from the lowest point on the cable to one of the supports. In this case, we'll say support B, and therefore the horizontal distance from where the lowest point on the cable is to support B, we'll call that X sub B. To do that, we need to take a small section of the cable, let's call that a DL, and if we blow that up here, here's our DL, and you can see that that forms a triangle where DL is the hypotenuse, and DX and DY are the two sides of that triangle. We can then see that using Pythagorean theorem, that DL is equal to the square root of DX squared plus DY squared, and with a few little mathematical tricks, first of all, by dividing both of these by a DX squared, and then multiplying times the DX squared pulled out of the radicals there, we can then write it as DL is equal to the square root of one plus dy dx quantity squared times dx. I've also written down the binomial expansion because we're going to need that in just a little while. And don't forget the equation of a, of a cable that supports a uniform distributed load, which is equal to the equation of a parabola, which is equal to the weight per unit length divided by two, and this should be t sub naught times x squared because we want to reference that to the tension, the horizontal tension in the cable, which is also the tension at the very lowest point on the cable. All right, now we're ready to try and measure, or not measure, but calculate the length. And since we have an equation for the small dl, we then know that the length, l, will simply be the integral of the dl, and we're going to integrate from x is equal to zero to x is equal to x sub b. So we're going to calculate this length of the cable right here, and this is therefore equal to the integral from 0 to x sub b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared times dx. Now, of course, we can't integrate that yet because our differential is in terms of x, and we still have the variable y in there, so we're going to have to find another expression for dy dx. And we can do that by going back to our equation here and taking the derivative of this equation. So let's do that. dy dx, therefore, is equal to 2 times the weight per unit length divided by 2 times the tension at the bottom of the cable times x to the first power. The 2's cancel out, and you can then see that that is a good way of expressing dy dx in only terms of x. So this can now be written as the integral from 0 to x sub b of the square root of 1 plus the quantity omega divided by t sub naught times x, and so we'll square that, times x squared times dx. But how do we integrate that? Well, it turns out we can actually use the binomial expansion now, and here we have an example of that, the square root of 1 plus a as long as a is a small number relative to 1, so a has to be much smaller than 1, and it can be written as this. So we're going to do that here. Now why can we say that omega divided by t sub naught quantity squared is a small number compared to 1? That would then assume that t sub naught is much, much greater, much larger than omega, the weight per unit length. And that is true if the cable is pulled such that there's not too much of a sag the more sag there is, the less tension there's going to be in the x direction. And of course, if you have a cable that hangs like this, then there will not be very much tension in the horizontal direction, then t will be relatively small, and then this may no longer work. The binomial expansion may no longer work. But in a typical scenario where the cable doesn't sag too much, then t sub now will be sufficiently large that this is a very small quantity, especially when it's squared, and therefore the binomial expansion will work. So let's plug in what we have. This is equal to the integral from 0 to x sub b e of 1 plus 1 half a. Now remember, a is this quantity right here, so it would be 1 half of that. So it would be 1 half a, which is omega over t sub naught quantity squared times x squared. So this is half times a. Now the next one will be minus. Typically, the first two terms are sufficient, but let's add one more term so you can see how the binomial expansion works. So minus 
Now notice that in this case, n will be 2, because here n is 0, n is 1, here n is equal to 2. If n is equal to 2, that 2 times 2 minus 3 is equal to 1. The numerator becomes 1. The denominator is 2 to the n power, 2 squared, that's 4, and n factorial, if n is 2, that's 2, 2 times 4 is 8, so we get 1 8 times a to the second power, and of course, again, a is this quantity right here, so that would be this quantity to the second power, and then a minus 1 8 in front of it. Minus 1 8 times omega over t sub naught, quantity to the fourth power now, because it's this quantity squared, times x to the fourth power, and this whole thing times dx. So now we have three terms, just so you can see how it works. Typically, it may be sufficient just to consider the two terms alone. Now we can integrate this. We get the following. This is equal to, when we integrate, we get x. This will be x cubed divided by 3, so it would be plus 1 over 6, omega over t sub naught squared times x cubed. And this would be x to the fifth, so we bring this to the bottom. That becomes minus 1 over 5 times 8, which is 40, times omega divided by t sub naught, quantity to the fourth power, x to the fifth power, evaluated from 0 to x sub b. And all we have to do then is replace every x by x sub b. And of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So this becomes equal to x sub b plus one-sixth the quantity omega divided by t sub naught quantity squared times x sub b cubed, and typically that would be sufficient, but just to add one more term, minus 1 over 40 times the quantity omega over t sub naught to the fourth power times x sub b to the fifth power. And so this would be the length of the cable from the lowest point of the cable all the way up to support B on the right side. And that's how we calculate that. Now all we have to do is know what X sub B is equal to, what the weight per unit length is, and what the tension is in the horizontal direction. Now in the next video, we'll show you how to actually calculate the tension in the horizontal direction. Well, actually we'll start with one that has a non-distributed load, that has load on some fixed points, and then we'll do an example where we have a distributed load in order to calculate the T sub naught. And that's how it's done.